What's up? What's good? Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Tuesday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. Hope each and every one of you are doing great. And I hope you're having a great week. If you could please hit that like button, subscribe button, and that bell notification button to get all my videos and lives when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of most of my videos. So what's up? How are each and every one of you doing? What's up to... Hold on, let me see who's up in here. I don't want that. All right, hold on. Bella David, what's up? James S., what's up? Fire Dragon, what's up? Christine Kohler, what's up? The Real Hex, what's up? Mitch, what's up? Music, what's up? Joe Bob, what's up? And Handsome Dad, what's up? John, John Money, what's up? XDFSF, what's up? How are you guys doing? It's been a minute, man. Illegally Blonde, what's up? <laughs> Rise of Wreckful, what's up? All right, all right, all right. You get the point, right? You get the point. Don't mind my crazy total psycho look right now. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, go straight lumberjack for a bit. No, 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 no. I'm cutting it off. Not, I don't know if I'm going to cut this off. Yeah, I do have the Dagestani beard right now. That is a fact. My bin name is OZ or Oz. Bro, I'm busy, dog. I'm working a lot. No, no. The only reason why I took this off was because it was so long that it was like, and I, I'm just not good at making a trimmed mustache. I don't know how to do it, dog. Let's keep it real. People do definitely get poked up all the time in Canadian prisons. XDF, I respect you, but uh, I'm going to leave the politics out of this. <laughs> I don't want I don't want to make my live about that. Justin Breen, or what random? James, man, I'm good, bro, brother. Just working a lot. Or do people do something that triggers it? I don't, hold on. My buddy said people get poked up all the time and can, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, buddy. Are they random? Or do, No, no, it's, it's not typically random. Like, it's not like you're going to just be walking down the yard and somebody's just going to stab you for no reason. It doesn't work like that. It's like, if you're moving weird, if you're running up debts that you can't pay for, if you're talking to the feds, if people have proof that your paperwork's bad, you have SA charges, that's when you're going to get poked up. You, you stick your nose in business that's not yours. That's when you get poked up. But it does sometimes happen when it shouldn't. Any, any advice for somebody doing a 40-month bid for the first time? Yeah, just be yourself. You know, Keep your nose clean. Try and get parole. You want to get out as fast as possible. Does it feel weird navigating the free world after doing a long bid? It does at, at first, for sure. It definitely takes some getting used to. Wrongfully accused SA. Damn. Well, that sucks for you, bud. You do time with... I don't mention names on my channel, but I've done a lot of time in the system. Just understand that. My brother told me a story today that he hasn't mentioned before, but said... While he was in Joyceville, Buddy got beat to death, and they left his brain matter and a pool of blood outside in the yard. Yo, I believe that. Especially lately in the in the reception, apparently some people have been getting beat to death there. Are there a lot of guys on that time of stuff, on that type of stuff, like on the violence? I wouldn't say that there's a lot. I'd say that there's a little that create a lot of mayhem. 
Matt, how do you get weekends? I picked someone up from Lindsay and two guys with me said they were waiting to do their weekends. You basically have to have like minimal record. You know? Like it's not really happening for like a, like a hardened con. It just it's just not. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You're going to have to ask me again, bro. I can't see it. You need a full-time job, and you need to be like a first-time offender. It's not just happening over and over and over. And it's typically going to be for like, like petty, petty stuff. Yeah, like a first-time DUI or like a theft under that's happened a few times. You know, like petty shit. Sorry, Mitch, you're going to ask me again, bro. How many days do trials typically run for? It, it depends, man. Like, uh, my bro's trial was over three months, and that was on a, on an L bit, on an M bit. So it just depends. Depends on how much evidence. Even someone was in PC, and they go to the pen. Do they still go to GP? Yes, they do. In Canada, yes, they do. I was talking about that kid that ran over those people in London a few years back. How does that go over in the pen? Is there guys on that type of stuff? You mean like like terrorism shit? Like not necessarily like that kind of terrorism, bombs and stuff, but like somebody just terrorizing civilians, like that kind of a charge, you mean? Like that guy that was on Young Street in Toronto, the incel guy that crashed into all those people. Like that kind of thing. A hit and run is probably, I don't know. Don't ask the host to read up and keep track. You're, yeah. <laughs> no, and Mitch is my dog, though. We've been, we've been, he's been watching the channel forever. We're okay with that. I've been watching your videos and learning a lot. Thank you. I also really appreciate the addictions talks. Yeah, I, I do have to do more of that. Does your bro have a chance for parole? He's already out. He's out on parole, bro. I, it does. I, I would think that it would depend, Mitch. It would depend who they're around. You know, I'd say that there's a lot of guys that probably wouldn't care. And then there's a lot of guys that definitely... 100% would care. I think you're going to typically lean to the latter. I think more people are going to care than not. But is somebody going to run at, at them for it? I don't know. You know, but I would I would like to think so. I know that if, if that was on my block, it wouldn't be happening. So. Like even Marco Muzzo, okay, that guy that DUI killed those four people. They kept him in SAG his whole bit in provincial. So if they snitch on an M case, they have no option for PC in the pen. There's definitely a super PC for sure. Which level of lockup is the worst and most dangerous? Well, it would, it would definitely be max federal. But any type of provincial is dangerous. But in federal, it's max, high, medium, or shoe. You know, you can catch violence anywhere, but most likely in those places. Yeah, his parents are still super rich. That's a big part of it. But it's also because of his crime, right? If he was just a normal dude, that necessarily wouldn't matter. But because of what he was on. That definitely made him a target. I was in East Detention when Bernardo was there. That occurred. Yeah, wait, that's a different, you know, they protected him for 30 something years and then claimed to stop protecting him and put him in like the most PC jail in the whole country. He probably, he's probably running that spot. Just imagine how fucked your mind is after being locked away with yourself for 30-something years. Yep, four to one. I am watching the game. 
never been to Sudbury, period. Was in the MAU with you in 2011, back on bullshit on a bracelet, not looking at another eight-ish. I'm hearing rumors of steam trays and powdered milk. Now, it's not rumors, bro. This is a fact. <laughs> like, the, bro, I watched them filling up the powdered milk bags in the Ville with a hose, a garden hose, bro. The shit's like, it has like a green hue to it. It's healthy, but <laughs> Callie, what's up, my brother? And the steam trays is everywhere except Fembrook and uh, Bath and nine, nine, nine block Collins Bay. King Ruck, man, you already know, player. Hope you're doing good, my bro. Yeah, nine block for sure. I didn't do a max bid. I did high medium. That was the highest I got, which was the Ville. And don't get it twisted. The Ville was a very violent, violent place when I was there. You see, they moved Bedard down the line. I don't think he's producing how much they were expecting. He's young, though. You can't throw a 19-year-old and expect him to try and save a shitty team. You know what I mean? You got to give him some time to grow. He'll be all right. New here, do you know anyone who committed crimes, got away with it? Did they feel guilt and shame? I mean, I've definitely got away with things. And in the moment, no. But I'd say now, grown up and thinking differently, I wouldn't say that I have regret, but I'd say I definitely feel bad. Ever did time with lifers who regretted doing what they do? 100%. I know 100% my brother regrets what he did. So when we go to the Ville for three months valuation, how do you know if someone is from PC? Listen, bro, when you're in provincial, you go on the goose to the pen separated. When you get off the goose together, they don't even care if they saw you were separated. But most of the time, guys aren't going to care. They're, they're not paying attention because it's already integrated. So they'd be wasting their time going after somebody. You know what I'm saying? If you're in the building, go up top. Hit that like button. Helps the algorithm and it helps me. And I appreciate it. So go up and do that, please. What to expect in first 24 to 48 hours of lockup? Stress. CPS, do they respect people who aren't from the GTA in Ontario prisons? No. It's not that they don't respect you. They don't trust that you're here for a good reason. If you can prove that you are, then you're good. It has nothing to do with, um, with that. And honestly, no, I haven't, Mitch. I haven't had a chance, bro. I, honestly, I haven't even had a chance to do anything for myself. I love him. He'll holler at me. He knows that. Hey, first time tuning in. Have found your videos informative. What is something that someone who's never been to jail would know? I don't understand. What do you mean? Wouldn't know. Wouldn't know about what, though? I know someone who went to Tyak on Jungle Range and said... That because there was no help, he ended up in the hamster wheel. That's a fact. And I was there. Kayak is where I started, you know. It's it's obvious that it was a big creator of the issue, you know. I wasn't prepared for that. But when I got thrown into that, you have to kind of level up, you know. So... If you hear that popping and snapping, that's cooking in the background. Busy, busy day. I worked over 11 hours today. So I kind of got to do everything at the same time. Do you, do you still respect it even if you, if you don't have bad charges, but you went to PC just because you jumped fences? Uh, no, you're not respected. You know, people might leave you alone, but... 
believe me, if anything ever goes bad, if you get in an argument with somebody, if you get too physical with somebody, if you try to clown on somebody, if somebody's joking with you and you try to joke back and they feel a way, they're never going to let that go. And um, nobody's going to trust you. You know, you're not going to be involved in nothing. You'll have to buy everything on like the small little petty scale. If you want to buy a bag of weed, you're going to have to buy two packers and shit. The hamster wheel is just being caught up in the system where you can't, you feel like it's impossible to get out. So you just basically accept that that's your lifestyle and that's what's your fate. You know, and it can get like that. You can start accepting that, that there's nothing different for you. And it's because from the time you start, you're told that you're, you're basically told that, you know, so you just give me one sec, guys. I got to make sure this fire alarm doesn't go off. Hold on. Turn the fan on. Those are gonna take a long time to cook, eh? You put a lot in there. That's gonna take a long time to cook. <laughs> Sorry, yo. <clears throat> it's getting smoky in here, dog. My bro's good, bro. He's living life. No, nah, no, nah, I'm not near Jasper, but I've been to Jasper. Just did a provincial gig in New Brunswick at Madawaska Regional Correctional Center. You know, how was that? Eleven hours, you know, some overtime. That's nice. Which gang got the most members in the pen? It's like Toronto's more like blocks. You know? So even there's lots of guys that claim the same colors, but they're not homies. So it's kind of like skewed. So I would say it's more blocks. And if when I was when I was doing my main stretch in the bill, I would say it was more almost like religion. You know, it was like Muslims, white boys, Christians, you know. Uh more race race driven there any chance of him coming on the channel he's not gonna come on the channel he's just not that guy bro you know i've asked him believe me i've asked him i'm a psych social worker and clients with mental illness that end up in jail get no psychiatric help no you know it's just that most people that are in the system need psychiatric help on some level. And the reality is that they just don't have the manpower, probably the budget, or the give a fuck, you know? So. Tell us about a tell us about a corrupted CEO story. I don't really tell those kind of stories, you know. But what I, I'll tell you, a corrupted actually, I will, because there's there's a Fed that works in provincial, okay, and this Fed works in Lindsay, Lindsay Jail, and she didn't like a dude. And this, you know, she used to create issues for me all the time. It's like you either conform and she's cool if you conform. But if you're young and you're just rambunctious and a troublemaker, she's going to try and make your life a living hell. You know, she expects like she's one of those feds that like she's been doing it so long that that's how she gets her rocks off is by like flexing on inmates, you know. She's the kind that will throw dude cigarettes and, like, do that kind of shit. But at the same time, do some real snaky shit. Anyways, she didn't like it, dude. She created fake essay paperwork 
and put it all over four pod to try and have him crushed. In my 20s, did some stealing burglaries, never caught, got accused, guilt, shame, bad at times. Yeah, I get that. I can't go to the States. You know, maybe one day if I can get a pardon or something, it'll take a long time. Is there a real racial division in the pen, though? Not really. Just at that time in the Ville, there was because there was such a huge Muslim population. And they really wanted control, right? So it wasn't... It wasn't really like racism per se. It was more like it just happened to be separated that way. And it was a control thing. You know, there's definitely some racism involved, though. I just seen Punk, Punky from the Ville. I'm sure you knew him. Big up, bro. Just saw this. So tapped in quick. You already know, dude. I don't know the name like by that, but maybe I do. I don't know. Sometimes it's just faces, you know? Tell us about the time you were followed. How did they do it? What do you mean the time I was followed? Like the feds? Seals, yeah, I guess they could get, they get poked sometimes, for sure. They get fired on, though, sometimes. Definitely. It's supposed to be 10 years from your last um, date of your probation finished. They didn't tap me, but they followed me. And they had videotapes, like stacks of videotapes. You know what it was from? Ring cameras. Um, people who have security systems. But I was lucky because a lot of the stuff didn't line up necessarily. So... Maybe they had a video of me like in a neighborhood, but it didn't necessarily prove anything. It was all circumstantial shit and uh, modus operandi. If you know how that works, like anytime you're doing robberies or beanies or anything like that, they're going to look at modus operandi and they're going to hand hammer you with everything that's similar. And it's up to you to fight that shit just the way it is. I don't know how they did it. I was high. So it wouldn't have probably been that difficult. You know what I'm saying? I was definitely not on point. You know, I would always, like, convince myself that I'm going to eventually go, right? So I would, like, justify before the mistakes even happened that that mistake was going to happen because of my mind state and the level of junkiness that I was going through. You know, but they definitely followed me, man. I've been followed a few times. But you know how it started was my homie who just passed away, who I've done a video about. He OD'd. Me and him weren't cool the last little bit. But I was still hurt when he died. But at the time, I was living with his mom when I first started getting into the shit. You know, she was letting me rent a room. And she called Crime Stoppers on me because she was mad at me that I was late at rent and I was moving out because I didn't want to deal with her shit. So she made a Crime Stoppers tip on me. And I know that because she's the only person who knew certain things. So that's how it all started. And then I got so sloppy at the end that, like, I would see them. You know, I'd be standing there at my homie's house and there'd literally be a car across the street with somebody just standing, sitting in the car looking at me. I remember one time my homie was being evicted and it was the house that I was uh, loitering at, I would say. Um, And we're all standing out front trying to figure out what to do. And there was a guy parked across the street in a church parking lot and he was in a Volkswagen, I remember, a Volkswagen Passat or a Jetta. I can't remember exactly which one. But he's just staring at us. And at the time, I thought that they were following my homie because he was doing his thing. But I was so stupid that I didn't realize that they were following me. And when I walked up to the car, as soon as I like kind of got close, he pulled out, backed away, and started laughing at me for being evicted. As he drove off. 
It's a crazy, man. <laughs> hey, Matt, you helped me a lot when my kid went to federal prison two years in now. What are some of the biggest limitations you have that will follow you for the rest of your life? No, I have my license and I actually have good credit. Leafs win, baby. Leafs win. Joseph Wall, man, he's the future. Um, but travel is definitely something. I don't like to fly anyways. But you don't have to fly to go to the U.S. I would love to go to Vegas. There's some things I'd love to do. It's not really in my future, sadly enough. But uh, I, you, can't, you can't do U.S. You can't do Australia. And I'm not sure if you can do the UK. I'm not sure. So, I don't know. That's something we'll see in the future. But I'm not a huge traveler anyways. You know, I'd like to go to the Caribbean at some point. I can do that. I maybe like to go to Europe at some point. I can do that. How are Asians treated? They're good. The thing is, most of the time, they're pretty organized. So you don't usually see a lot of Asians in jail for, like, junky shit and, like, petty shit. You just don't. It's like they they take care of each other, you know? So, like, you just don't typically see that. Um, usually in the federal, at least in federal, when you see Asian dudes, they're serious guys. Sometimes people do discriminate, man. When I first started my job, somebody literally tried for a year and a half to get me fired because he didn't like me. And he was this close. This close, and he didn't even know it. There was some time that I was a little, like, considering seriously smashing that dude, you know. Like, telling myself, if this guy costs me this job, I'm going to smash him. They, if they come in to walk me out, I'm going to run into the shop and I'm just going to beat his face in. Because he literally, like, tormented me for a year and a half. There, nah, I wouldn't say there was, like, a serious race war when I was in the bin. But just before I did my second bit, there was. In Joyceville. Big time. White versus black. Dale, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I try. I imagine getting a pal is hard after being in the clink. Getting a what? What's a pal? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Should do a vid on the 2000 Bill Easter static. That, I have done it. I'm pretty sure I have done it. That's what I was talking about, because I got there in May. And that happened in Easter, uh, April. I need to have somebody that was there that can actually tell the story better than me, because... Although I know it, like, a lot of the stuff is secondhand, you know, or from just when I get there. Because it just kind of happened. They had just gotten off lockup. Like, just gotten off lockup. So, possession, possession and acquisition, license, a.k.a. guns, fire drive. Have you ever had a cellmate who caught a body? What do you mean? Like a lifer? Many times. <clears throat> I wanted to ask about what? OC? I don't know what that is.
Five more minutes, guys. And then I got to go eat dinner. I don't understand, Christine. There are definitely organized crime guys in the pen. So I knew a guy. He was a pretty big guy, like a pretty well-known Canadian mobster. And we used to like me and my homie that was like my best friend most of my life when I was fucking around. We lived on the block with him and we used to like be tight. You know, we used to like we'd jump, we'd try and attack him. Like the two of us would try and wrestle him, you know, and try and attack him and take him down. But he's huge. Like the total cliche looking mob guy just jacked covered in tats slick back silver hair like you know just just totally fit the bill the problem was he was only half italian and despite the fact that he was rolling he was like big dog of the biggest dog in the country and uh he ended up getting slapped out you can watch it on YouTube. I, I don't mention names, but he got slapped. 40 times or something they said he got shot. The streets never loved you to begin with. You love the streets. You know what I mean? Streets never loved. It's a savage place. I met a few rappers. For real. I met a few rappers. I know how they get drugs in the pen. That's not the only way, but that's the main way. <laughs> They're left alone for sure. Brett Ryan killed his family with a crossbow and scarborough. Yeah, yeah, I remember that story. Yeah, I don't rate that shit. That's weirdo shit. I mean, I don't know what his family did. So if he was like tortured and abused for 10 years and like chained up and whatever, then okay. But other than that, weirdo. It's a project sending drugs in and out of here and wiretap and surveillance. Did he get medium or max? Medium. Maybe not even medium. Big up to the underground Toronto rappers. You already know. I love Toronto hip-hop, man. <laughs> I love it. I bump a lot of it. Do those crime guys run the shit, though? Do they? No. Honestly, bro, black guys run the shit. Like, they do. In Ontario, anyways. You know, they if you if you try to argue otherwise, they'll just run up on you like twenty deep. <laughs> but they definitely live good, you know. And you can live good too. It's not like it's constant bullying or anything like that. It's just the outright keys, typically, in at least where I've been, have typically been black guys. Although there are exceptions. So they get in cell phones inside like they do in the States. There's definitely phones, but not like they do in the States. No, I haven't checked the new Mustafa tune, no. Nope. But I, I, I know who he is, though. And I know his music. Some of his music. You bump Big Lean P. Rain or anyone from back. Yeah, I like Dre Bars. I like his music. Um, I don't hate P. Rain's music, but I like the new shit, to keep it real. I like the drill shit, you know. Uh, I think there's a lot of talent in Toronto, you know. I think Biz Loke is talented. I think Doovy is talented. I think Berna Bands is talented. I think Richie Stacks can write bars. I think, um, 
I think Pressa is talented. I think these guys like have the ability to be big, you know? Yeah. Top five is smart, you know, marketing genius, you know, he knows the internet. He knows algorithms. He understands all that shit. Like at a deep level. Yeah. Bully, bully was definitely talented, you know? Um, I'm not super into the melodic rap, although I do like um, my boy there. Uh, Money Machine, keep running, keep running, keep running. You know, uh, you know what I'm talking about. From I think he's from Brampton. My boy's tough. Uh, you know, is it Benji? Who, you know, I, I'm, I'm stuck right now. I can't figure it out in my head. I respect Casper. I respect his hustle, but I don't personally love the music. Northside Benji, that's it. I do think that Casper hustles, though, you know, and I think that, like, he'll make it off of that, you know. Uh, the thing about a lot of these Toronto dudes actually are living what they're rapping, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of them are. So, I know they diss each other, and they say that it ain't that, and this guy is not living it, but a lot of them are actually living what they're rapping about. So, it's authentic, you know. I like that. Hey, Mitch, Doovie might still make it, man. Free up. Hopefully he beats that case. Hopefully that's not him. I wish all these young guys, man. These guys got talent, bro. You know, Crook the Crook. He's got talent. I just, I mean, There's a lot of guys that I'm just not thinking of off my head right now. That There's a lot of talent, you know. And I love that drill shit. So I don't comment on a lot of it because I know that there's a lot of politics involved. And I actually know some people involved in this, the politics, you know, and I don't want to, like, insult anybody, you know. I don't think Bernardo will ever get out. The issue is a slang accent. Amer Americans can't get with it, and that's the gateway to make it. That's a fact, but it depends on who they are, you know? There's a lot of Toronto dudes that don't necessarily sound like that, you know? You know, you got your, you know, the YGs and stuff that are, like, have that real Toronto accent, you know? Um, they, Their music's probably going to be limited to Canada just because um, of that exact reason, right? Doesn't mean they can't blow and be big here and make money, but... Certain rappers have a sound that translates, you know. I love YG's music, though. He's funny. Canada's hip-hop hip town is slept on. That's for show. Toronto, there's a lot of talent in this city, man. You know, these guys just got to stop getting in each other's way, you know, and get out of their own way. And um, hopefully that happens, you know. I, I wish the best for all of these dudes. What do you think happened? Tory Lanez was fair. Do I think it was? I mean, if he actually shot her, then I think that it's fair. He knows that. But I'm not sure he did. I'll trust that that Megan. Not one bit. Uh, to me, Doovie was like the next to blow. Like Houdini had that next level talent, you know? Like R.I.P. Houdini. He had for sure crossover talent. Uh, I think Doovie had that same kind of talent, you know.
where he could have for sure crossed over. You know, you just look at reaction videos to Toronto music. You know, they, it, I love it. And I'm going to support it. I'm going to keep pumping views. You know, I, I, a lot of that stuff, I just keep on repeat, you know. Do guys that go a statute rape charge treat it the same as chomos? Yes, because you are a chomo if it's a statutory charge. What do you mean? You are a chomo. There's an, it's it's if not, it wouldn't be a statutory. It would just be a grape. You know what I mean? Charge it to the game? No, that's a hard track. Not music for me. No, no, no. I don't got no musical talent. I sound horrible. I hear you. I, I understand that he dated the girl. It don't matter. They don't look at it like that. <laughs> they see grape. And that's it. Although, I do have a story where a guy that I knew in the Ville threw out some paperwork because he had a sexual interference charge. And it was a similar situation where he was 16, his girlfriend was 14, and her father had him charged. But they were together for years, even after. So he threw the paperwork out thinking that, oh, this is going to be bad. And it did. It backfired on him because somebody found that paperwork because they go through all the garbage, you know. If you throw your garbage out, they, like, order through it all. They search and, like, separate recycling and stuff. So there's, like, inmates going through it. So if they see paperwork in there, they're definitely going to look. So that's what happened. And he almost got cooked over that. But when he told his story, they believed him. You know, the paperwork, though, would have had to definitely line up with what he was saying. There's no breaks on, on SA charges at all. But you guys you guys already know, man, I'm out of here. I got to go. You already know, Don Mount, Regent, Esplanade, Blake Street, man. I had a homie from Blake Street, dog, that I did time with, man. I love that dude. That dude made me laugh so much. If you, if convicted, you think I'll get fast track through reception? Second violent pen bit was the aftermath of just refusing programs to get my mother quicker. It, de I don't know. It's hard to say. It depends on how many people are in reception at the time. I would say just expect to be there, you know, and do your program. I like some heavy metal for sure. You already know there, Bitman Bobby. Watch yourself. Free the real. Love y'all. You guys have a good night. Hit that like button before you go. You already know plays. And subscribe. Love y'all.